ending in 0480. That would be Mario. Thank you. I thought that was you. I just wanted to check. Good morning, Member Cox. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Good, good, good. See, Member Andrews awake this morning. Long before you. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that. Lee and I were in the other, in the uh, closed session. So we had to get over. We always start an open session, Member Cox. Oh no, I can't believe it. <laughs> they told me that they said they start the other session first. Well, that's the first agenda item, but that's not where we start. We have to open the meeting first. I got it, Miss Natalie.
Yes, sir. Um, give me one moment. Thank you. Chairman, Thanks. we do have all the members. Um, I do believe you can start the meeting. Great, thank you so much. Well, then we might as well go ahead and uh, get started. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Slater. I'm chairman of the MDTA board. Uh, I hereby call the meeting of the MDTA board to order at 8.01 a.m. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, and in accordance with our live streaming law, this meeting is being conducted via video conference and is being live streamed on the MDTA board webpage. All members will have their video active during the entirety of the meeting. Uh, I am hopeful we're going to be out of this, uh, this environment soon and we'll be back in person. Uh, I ask that anyone who is presenting or answering a question, uh, please turn your uh, video and audio on when speaking. When you're done, please turn your video off and put your audio on mute. To minimize background noise during the call, I'd like to ask everyone on the line to please mute your phones except when speaking. For those of you watching uh, this meeting via the live stream, we have posted the materials for today's meeting on the MDTA board webpage so that you can follow along uh, if you would like. We do have several members of the public who have uh, signed up to comment during the uh, various agenda items for this morning's meeting. Uh, we welcome all of you to the meeting and ask that you please uh, wait for that uh, meeting uh, agenda item and we'll certainly call on you. Uh, I will provide you an opportunity to comment right after the agenda item uh, that you registered for uh, as when it is presented. We appreciate everyone's patience and, and ask everyone hold any comments until that designated time as we work through that. You now before we begin today's agenda, I, I just want to thank all of you for your time today for the special meeting of the Maryland Transportation Authority Board. I want to provide you just a quick overview of some of the important items that we're going to review this morning. You know, at our, our last meeting in May, the board approved the start of a public comment period for the toll rate setting for Phase 1 South American Legion Bridge 270 to 370. Uh, the intent of today's meeting is to allow us to focus, focus exclusively on a number of items related to that Phase 1 P3 solicitation, Phase 1 only most of which were presented to the board as information items back in February. But before we get into the items related to the P3 agreement, I wanna take a minute to remind everyone of exactly what is moving forward uh, on this agenda and why it's so important to our system uh, in our national capital region. The, fa the phase P3 agreement before us today is not for construction. It's to bring a, a partner to further uh, preliminary design, uh, pre-construction work, uh, and other due diligence activities for the American Legion Bridge to, in 270. As the project sits today, uh, it has no property displacements. It's largely within the existing right of way. It increases the person throughput in 2045 by up to 50% in sections of the interstate during those peak hours, while reducing the delay on our local roads in Montgomery County uh, by 5%. So what we're going to do is we would like to, to discuss today bringing that developer on board to further minimize that footprint, further collaborate with the stakeholders, work on those design elements, and this will all be done before we would bring construction contract back to the board. We have a lot of infrastructure discussions happening uh, nationally right now. This project involves some critical pieces of infrastructure for Maryland. It's critical for Maryland that we move forward with this important work on the American Legion Bridge. The bridge was opened in 1962. Uh, the last major work was completed on it back in the 80s. It's frankly just nearing the end of its useful life and we either have to uh, replace the bridge deck or the entire bridge by 2030. That seems like a long way away, but it's not a significant amount of time when you think about the project development and what it takes to get a project like this ready. Our trust fund uh, simply just does not have the funding to do this type of work on our own. So without significantly delaying or impacting other projects across our system associated with port infrastructure, transit infrastructure, our other highway infrastructure, bridges, tunnels, those types of things, we really need to rethink about them and are all coming to roost at the same time. And that's exactly what we're looking at today. This corridor has been the most congested in Maryland for many years. And simply providing a wider bridge will not provide that congestion relief. We need a solution that will accommodate multimodal travel connections and incentivize people to carpool and get together. That's exactly what these hot lanes will do. 
new opportunities for carpooling, new opportunities for transit service between Maryland and Virginia. It's going to include new options for biking across the Potomac. With that in mind this morning, I'm just simply asking you to consider and vote on that contingent approval of the phase one developer selection. The phase one P3 agreement and a series of related items which really constitute an important step in advancing this phase one South simply to this 30 day public and legislative review process. The final award of the P3 agreement will all be contingent on the approval of the Maryland Board of Public Works. So what that means is any final decisions before moving forward will lie with the Board of Public Works. So remember there'll be some future opportunities for us to uh, review the public to comment uh, before we move ahead with any kind of, of construction. You know, while our, our staff is gonna provide us some updates and further context on each of the items today, uh, first on the agenda is gonna be a, a, a closed session where we can uh, get some legal advice from, from our legal counsel uh, and then we'll return to the open session where we're going to look at really five different items. One is our P3 resolution. This was presented back in February and amends that board resolution adopted in November of 18 to designate and classify the P3 program as a transportation facilities project. So to now multiple agreements and, and interest to be executed in stages more consistent with that smaller phase one on where we are today. There's a leasehold element on here, which presented in February, allow us to create a leasehold interest with SHA for those high occupancy toll lanes if the Board of Public Works approves the, the phase one P3 agreement. Uh, we have the developer selection that was also presented in February. It was given, we got an update, uh, but looking at for contingent approval before we seek, so we can get that public comment, that legislative review process before going to the Board of Public Works. And then uh, the P3 agreement. Most of this item was presented in February as well, and we'll provide an update on some of the modifications, uh, the trust, the term sheets, uh, and the concepts that, that have been discussed prior to MDTA board meetings. And then finally, a legislative report. What will go to the legislature for their review? Uh, as I've said, we have a lot on our plate today, and I, I look forward to a thoughtful discussion and consideration as our staff presents uh, and thinking about those next steps but continuing collaboration with our stakeholders towards the development of these projects, multimodal congestion relief, a host of other benefits as quickly and cost effectively as possible. So that was uh, just a little bit of context before we start today's meeting. Uh, we will now uh, begin today's agenda uh, with our closed session. Per the Maryland Open Meetings Act, the MDTA board will meet in closed session under general provisions, article sections 3-305B7 to receive legal advice regarding approving a P3 agreement and other related P3 documents in the face of a pending uh, protest appeal. Is there a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The time is now 8.08 .08, and we will now be going into closed session. For, for those persons on the line, we'll, the board will now be hanging up at a meeting uh, separately on closed session. But as soon as we have completed the closed session, we're going to be back on this link uh, to complete the agenda and ratify any actions that will be taken in closed session. And we certainly appreciate your patience and ask that you just remain on the line. Uh, members, please hang up and, and go on to the uh, open session. Thank you so much.
Good morning again. again. Thank you to everyone for your patience. Natalie, you just let me know. I know member um, uh, Ganjami was was switching uh, from phone to computer, so let me know when everyone's on and I'll get started again. Yes, sir. Just give me a few moments. Thank you. Great, thank you. It looks like member Gandrami has been able to join us. Yes, sir, we are good. Okay, great, thank you. Good morning again uh, to everyone on the line. Thank you for your patience. The time is now 8.29 a.m. and the board has completed its closed session. In order to ensure there is a quorum of the board present, I'm gonna take a, do a quick roll call of the members to make sure everyone is back on the line. Member Carroll. Here. Member Cox. Present. Member Enzer. Member Enzer, you need to unmute, sir. Member Gaines. I see Member Gaines on here. Great. Member Ganjami. Member Ganjami. Sorry, it keeps kicking me out, um, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. Member Ardinger. Here. Member Rosen. Here. Member on Paris. Here. Great. For the record, uh, we do have a quorum. And for the record, there were no actions uh, taken in closed session uh, requiring ratification. Uh, at this point, uh, we will continue with today's agenda. Kim Melinder, you are up with agenda item number two, uh, which is the approval of the P3 resolution number 21-02. Thank you, Chairman and members. So as you will recall, uh, we presented this as a uh, discussion item back in February. This is draft resolution 21-02 that modifies your prior board re resolution 1804 that designated the P3 project as a transportation facilities project by law. And the modification really reflects the change and shift in the P3 program from the process of a single development to phases. And it really allows for adopting the program in phases and, and recognizes that there will be multiple agreements moving forward. And that's really the sole change. And so we're presenting this today for your concurrence and approval. Chairman, I think you're muted, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, uh, just for clarification, uh, you know, this is just matching the previous uh, approval to that smaller phase of the American Legion Bridge in 270. Thank you. Any uh, questions from members of the board for uh, Kim? I'll make a motion that we approve this um, modified resolution. Um, one, one second before we vote, I do have one person that has, uh, would like to comment on this item, uh, Mr. Jason Stanford. Uh, president of the Northern Virginia Transportation Alliance, Mr. Stanford. Um, are you on the line, sir? Uh, I am, Secretary Slater. Great, thank you. Uh, just as a reminder, you have two minutes uh, for your comment, and the board uh, will vote on the item once you're uh, completed. Great. 
Thank you, Secretary Slater, um, and thank you for the opportunity to comment today. Uh, my comments are really addressing all of the items that I think you guys are voting on today. Uh, as I said, my name is Jason Stanford, and I'm the president of the Northern Virginia Transportation Alliance. For more than 30 years, the Alliance has been at the forefront of championing improvements to the D.C. area's transportation infrastructure. I'm commenting today because the Alliance is one of more than 60 business, labor, and community organizations including the Montgomery County Chamber, Prince George's County Chamber, Maryland Chamber, and the Baltimore DC Metro uh, Building Trades Council, among many others that strongly supports moving forward with this project as quickly as possible. In addition to fixing our region's worst bottleneck, the American Legion Bridge, and relieving congestion for both free and toll lane users, this project will allow carpoolers to use the express lanes for free, invest 300 million in transit, allow for express bus service between Bethesda and Tysons, create a new bike and pedestrian connection between Virginia and Maryland, and increase the number of jobs that are accessible within 45 minutes by automobile in our region, especially for Montgomery and Prince George's County residents. That's why this project is one of the National Capital Transp Region Transportation Planning Board's long range aspirational goals and is so critical to accommodating the additional 1 million jobs and 1.3 million people expected by 2045. It's clearly within our community's best interest to move forward with this project as quickly as possible. Every day we delay leads to millions of dollars in increased construction costs and uncertainty. There's no other way for Maryland to fund this project than a P3 agreement. The needs and benefits have been clearly demonstrated over and over again. Failing to move forward now would be a complete disservice to the hundreds of thousands of people who travel in this corridor every day, as well as the thousands more who will move to our area by 2045. Thank you for your time and consideration of this important matter, and I hope you will continue to move this critical project forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Stanford, for uh, your comments, but also for taking the time uh, to be here with us today. Uh, I now have a, a motion on the table from uh, Member Rosen uh, for approval. Do I have a second? Member Carroll, I second Member Cox. Member Arden. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Motion carries. Uh, agenda item number two has uh, been approved. Then we'll move on to uh, agenda item number three. This is the uh, lease agreement. Uh, there are no members uh, of the public signed up for this agenda item, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Mr. Wittemeyer, uh, John Wittemeyer, to, to break this issue down for us. Mr. Wittemeyer? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, sir. Yes. Please Thank proceed. You. Sorry about that. Thank you, Secretary Slater. Uh, my name is John Wedemeyer. I'm the uh, Real Estate Services Manager for the Mail and Transportation Authority. The purpose of this agenda item is to request contingent approval on a lease agreement between Maryland Transportation Authority and the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. This leasehold interest for the price managed lanes on phase one south, the American Legion Bridge at I-270 to I-370 project um, will will provide, um, I'm sorry, the approval of this item is contingent upon the Board of Public Works uh, approval of the private public-private partnership of the phase one American Legion Bridge I-270 to I-70 project. This agreement is based on MDOT State Highway Administration standard lease agreement, which was previously discussed on February 25, 2001. There has been no changes to this document. Exhibits have been attached to this document that um, depicts uh, MDOT SHA's right away in the following areas. One, I-495, from and including the American Legion Bridge to the interchange with I-270 near Rockville Pike. Number two, the I-270 from interchange to, with um, I-495 near Rockville Pike 
to the interchange of I-370, including the I-270 uh, Eastern Spur. And the third one is I-270 Western Spur from the interchange of I-495 near Bradley Avenue Boulevard to the interchange with Tuckerman Lane. The price managed lanes are depicted between the northbound and southbound travel lane. We recommend giving this item contingent approval. Any questions? Sorry, uh, thank you, Mr. Wittermeyer. Any questions from members of the board? So this is the first of uh, what are gonna be contingent approvals. So essentially uh, we have, uh, we're asking for a contingent approval subject to the final approval of the agreement by the Board of Public Works. Do I have a motion for a contingent approval? So moved. Member I'll, Rosen. I'll, I'll move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries of contingent approval. Uh, we've now reached agenda item number four, which is another contingent approval of the P3 developer selection. Uh, Jeff Folden is going to present this item. He's our P3 uh, program uh, deputy director. Once he's completed the presentation, uh, we're going to hear comments from those uh, members of the public. Uh, and Jeff, you are up. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the authority. Uh, once again, for the record, my name is Jeff Folden, Deputy Director for the 495 and 270 Public Pri Partnership or P3 program for the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. Uh, today, we're seeking MDTA Board's contingent approval for the phase developer for phase one of the P3 program. And phase one is known as the American Legion Bridge I-270 to I-70 relief plan. And it begins south of the George Washington Memorial Parkway in Virginia, includes improvement of the American Legion Bridge, and extends north to I-270 and up I up I-270 all the way to I-70 in Frederick. On your first slide in the, your packet, you can see a map of phase one, which is broken into two phases, phase one south and phase one north. Our initial focus for the pre-development work is phase one south, which is that American Legion Bridge to I-370 portion. Uh, on slide two of your packet, you can see uh, a map or excuse me, you can see a description of the progressive P3 approach we'll be utilizing for this. And most of this information was presented to you back in the February board meeting, but I'm going to go over this a little bit more to refresh your memory. Uh, this will be the first progressive P3 that Maryland has utilized. However, we typically utilize a fixed price approach, but uh, we've used many progressive projects in Maryland, such as construction management risk and progressive design build. So progressive processes are not new to Maryland DOT. Uh, while new to Maryland, for Progressive P3, this is similar to managed lane projects that have been done in the U.S. in both Texas for the North Tarrant Express and Virginia on 495, I-95, and I-395. So there are multiple steps in the Progressive P3 process, first being the selection of the developer, which we call the phase developer. Once that phase developer is selected and approved, they will be responsible for pre-development work, and pre-development work is preliminary design and construction. So they'll be collaborating with MDOT and all of our stakeholders to further develop the MDOT recommended preferred alternative developed in the National Environmental Policy Act study for phase south during the pre-development work. And just to give you a little definition around pre-development work, that references the phase of preliminary design between the origination of the concept of the project and the initiation of final design and construction. So it's really when we gather information, explore options, minimize impacts, eliminate and reduce risks, and we make decisions around the definition of a project. And it involves in a large part developing a financially feasible project collaborating with all parties and stakeholders. So we're really looking to develop a project that's bankable, can obtain debt financing and reach close of finance. And that pre preliminary design also supports the completion of the NEPA process. So we can authorize that final design and construction. Only after the NEPA process is completed for phase one south and the pre-development work's been completed, will MDOT look to move forward with what we call a section P3 agreement, which will cover that final design construction, financing, operations, and maintenance. That section P3 agreement would come back to the MDTA board expected next year and ultimately go through the, le the legislative and public review process before seeking final approval of the Maryland Board of Public Works. And once approved, that section agreement would be for the final design, construction, financing, operations, and maintenance for phase one south for 50 years. Uh, so once again, that phase agreement is only for the preliminary design and pre-construction work, not for any construction. 
And we'd follow a summer process for phase north in developing the NEPA document and the uh, pre-development work before seeking any section P3 agreement for phase one north, which would also come back to the MBTA board and ultimately the legislative review and board of public works. Uh, slide three of your packet has the MDOT recommended preferred alternative, which we presented to you uh, the update last month. Just a, a reminder, so this would provide two high speed toll lanes across the American Legion Bridge and up I-270 to I-370. Uh, it also has a bicycle pedestrian connection across the American Legion Bridge, linking trails in Virginia, Maryland, improving bicycle and pedestrian access in other areas and making environmental enhancements throughout the corridor. The hot lanes are gonna provide new opportunities for faster and more reliable suburban transit, including free usage of the hot lanes for buses and provide ramp connections to transit and activity centers. Lanes would also allow transit connections across the American Legion Bridge between Maryland and Virginia that aren't possible today because of the bottleneck. And that includes Tyson's, Bethesda, Gaithersburg, and places in between. The hot lanes would boost ride sharing as well as since van pools and car pools with three or more, people can use the hot lanes for free. Also, the existing general purpose lanes will remain free, meaning everyone can still use those lanes if they choose to. Or drivers can choose to use the hot lanes, those with three or more people for free, and only those with less than three people would need to pay a toll if they chose to use the lanes. But everyone will benefit from the hot lanes whether they choose to use them or not. Uh, moving forward to slide four, I uh, just wanted to hit at a high level on the solicitation process. We followed a two-step solicitation, started off with a request for qualifications, seeking the most highly qualified teams. We received four responses to that, and we shortlisted all four proposers. The draft request for proposals was issued in July of last year. And after about a six month process, we uh, received proposals from three of the four shortlisted proposers. Uh, so on the next slide, there's a listing of the three teams that submitted proposals in December 2020 for technical and financial in January 2021. They are Accelerating Maryland Express Partners, Accelerate Maryland Partners, so there's a, two different names there, just to be clear, Accelerate Maryland Express Partners and Accelerate Maryland Partners, and then Capital Express Mobility Partners. So I want to be clear that this shows the leads for the teams, but these are not the teams in their entirety. Each team had much more fully developed teams, and that includes, just as an example, Accelerate Maryland Partners, who's our selected developer. They also included a lot of sub consultants, including a, a subcontractor, Bechtel, who's the largest contractor, one of the largest contractors in the world, and really the, the top ranked ENR contractor, engineering news report contractor. So this is just the, the highest level of the teams. It doesn't include the entire team that's proposed. And I'll talk about more about the Accelerate Maryland Partners team later in a future agenda item. Uh, moving on to the next slide is the evaluation process. Just hit at a high level of how the evaluation process went. We uh, convened separate technical and financial review teams and they perform the initial ratings for the technical proposal and the financial proposal. And then once they completed their ratings, it was raised to the evaluation committee, which consisted of senior leadership from MDOT, MDTA, and MDOT SHA, and the review team leaders, as well as community representatives from Montgomery County and Frederick County, and a federal highway representative. So this evaluation committee spent the better part of, oh, well, the better part of a week, over 50 hours actually, I think, deliberating and de determining what it recommended is the most uh, advantageous or best value proposal to the state, uh, came to a conclusion and presented that to the selection committee, which consisted of the MDOT secretary, MDOT SHA administrator, and MDTA executive director, at which time we sought uh, concurrence in that selection, which uh, we did receive. And then we uh, had made that announcement of the selection back in mid-February. Uh, moving on to slide seven. Um, just want to give you a flavor of what was in the technical proposal and the financial proposal. Uh, the technical proposal consisted of multiple criteria and sub-criteria to be responded to in the pre development work proposal, and they were tied to the overarching goals of our program, including delivery certainty, minimizing impacts, maximizing value to the state, congestion relief, and uh, community benefits. And we weighted those criteria and sub-criteria in the RFP with critical, significant, and important. Critical being three times more than important, significant being two times more than important. And the adjective ratings were used for the technical rating and each sub-criteria and criteria to ultimately get to the overall technical proposal rating. And the financial criteria were also used. Uh, we defined those financial criteria in the RFP. They each had a maximum that may be submitted for the financial criteria and maximum points that could be earned. And there was no floor or minimum in these financial criteria. 
The proposers were advised they needed to best manage their financial risk between these financial criteria as they saw fit, as they uh, will be used in the final negotiated pricing between the state and the phase developer in developing that final design construction financing operations maintenance agreement for the section agreement. Uh, next slide are the results of the evaluation. Uh, so we conducted this solicitation process and evaluation in a sound and thorough manner. We provided all proposers fair and equitable treatment, and the evaluation was conducted in accordance with the requirements of the request for proposals. And at the inclusion of the evaluation, the ratings of the three proposers are shown in the table here. Capital Express Mobility Partners had a good plus technical rating and a financial score of 665. Uh, Accelerate Maryland Partners had a moderately lower rated good proposal and a much significantly higher rated financial score of 1365, more than two times greater than the Capital Express Mobility Partners score and Accelerate Maryland Express Partners had acceptable uh, technical and 800 financial score. So based on the requirements of the RFP, the technical and financial proposers were considered approximately equal weight in making the determination of the best value. And MDOT and MDTA's evaluation committee determined that AMP's strong technical solution and best financial proposal made it most advantageous to the state. So moving on to slide nine to talk a little bit about what the state is getting from Accelerate Maryland Partners. Um, so the team provided a strong understanding of the project and they had well thought out approaches to manage and mitigate project risks, including design solutions that would further reduce property impacts, reduce potential utility conflicts, and provide environmental stewardship, such as additional water quality enhancements within the corridor. They've also committed to delivering Phase South as a single Section P3 agreement with no Maryland funding and closing financed by fall of 2022. They also provided commitments for additional improvements during construction of phase one south to address visual, vision zero goals by providing improved and safer bicycle and pedestrian connections. They also had commitments over the operating term for transit improvements in Montgomery County, estimated at 300 million, community grant program, estimated at 50 million, grants for emerging technologies such as connected and autonomous vehicles, estimated at 25 million. And all this is gonna be further developed during the pre-development work in collaboration with the local stakeholders. They also proposed a $145 million development rights fee, which is for the exclusive right to develop phase one. And that $145 million would be payable upon financial close of the section P3 agreement for phase one south. They had a comprehensive approach to local workforce development, including small minority disadvantaged and veteran owned businesses, local union and local contractor involvement, and engagement with local community and local organizations and educational institutions. So all of these factors led us to see that Accelerate Maryland Partners was the best value for the state, both in the technical and the financial side. So now I wanna talk about the next steps a little bit. But before I do that, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, what's happened since the February of 18th uh, present announcement and the February 25th board meeting today. So it was, Capital Express Mobility Partners did file a protest objecting to the decision to award the Phase P3 agreement to Accelerate Maryland Partners on March 1st. And after a thorough review of this protest and seeking advice from the attorneys within the Office of Attorney General, uh, I issued the contracting officer's final decision on April 15th, 2021, denying the protest. The protest was denied because it failed on its merits on all bases and was either untimely or partially untimely. So generally speaking, Capital Express Mobility Partners was protesting MDOT's decision to approve Accelerate Maryland Partners substitution for lead contractor. They were protesting Maryland's acceptance of AMP's financial proposal markups. They were protesting AMP's markups would undermine delivery certainty. And they had disagreement with the ratings that MDOT and MDTA provided on their proposal. So essentially they just disagreed with MDOT and MDTA's judgments related to the request for proposals. And CMP had significant opportunity to review and comment on that for six months prior to the submission of proposals. CMP is just inaccurate in its allegations and it objects to our business and technical judgments, which determine the requirements of the solicitation and the proposer other than Capital Express Mobility Partners present the most advantageous offer to the state. You know, our determination that AMP's proposal was most advantageous to the state was consistent with the requirements of the RFP and our technical and business judgments exercised by the evaluation committee and the evaluation teams. So CMP did have the option to file an appeal, which they did on April 21st. We made a thorough review of that appeal and found that no new information was offered to demonstrate any merit to any aspects of the protest. They have requested a hearing on the appeal, but it's not yet been scheduled. So determination was made and concurred on by the Secretary of MDOT that it would be in the state's best interest to proceed with the award of the phase one P3 agreement for the pre-development work without delaying 
to protect substantial state interests. This is made in compliance with the RFP, where MDOT reserved the right to do this. So as set forth in the contracting officer's final decision, including the facts and procedures referenced within it, Capital Express Mobility Partners unsupported allegations do not justify reversing the reasonable and rational decisions of MDOT and MDTA related to the RFP, the evaluation of proposals, or the recommendation to award. So there's mere disagreement with the business and technical judgments of MDOT and MDTA do not warrant making a change. They seek to either have AMP disqualified as the proposer or reopen the solicitation under the terms that CMP desires. And that's inconsistent with MDOT and MDTA's RFP, and neither which of these are required or recommended. So we are seeking respectfully your contingent approval to move forward with the selection of the phase developer, as it's an important next step to allow for the start of the 30-day public and legislative review process. The final award of the phase one P3 agreement to Accelerate Maryland Partners will be contingent upon approval by the Maryland Board of Public Works. So once again, we feel moving forward now is necessary to protect substantial state interests and managing risks and meeting our infrastructure needs. We are taking the step after extensive consultation with our advisors Delaying the pre-development work would do irreparable harm to the state. Instead, this work will, needs to continue as an important investment in continued collaboration with our stakeholders toward delivering the new American Legion Bridge, multimodal congestion relief in the corridor, and a host of other important benefits as quickly and cost-effectively as possible. So upon your contingent approval, we would advance this phase P3 agreement for 30-day review by the Comptroller, Treasurer, and Budget Committees in June and July of this year. And then mid to late July, we would be seeking BPW approval of the phase P3 agreement. Upon, upon that approval, we would execute the P3 agreement and move forward with the pre-development process. Uh, we would expect the pre-development process to take about a year, at which time we would get a committed section proposal from Accelerate Maryland Partners for that 50 years final design, construction, financing, operations, and maintenance for that first section, American Legion Bridge to I-370, which we would then bring that back to the MDTA board for review and concurrence and contingent approval to move forward. And if we got that contingent approval, we would move forward with another 30 day review of that section P3 agreement with the legislature, comptroller, treasurer, and department of legislative services. And then ultimately seeking final approval of the board of public works. And that's not expected before summer of next year. If we get to that financial close, we'd be seeking, excuse me, that approval of the board of public works, we'd be seeking financial close in fall of 22 to allow the final design construction, financing, operations, and maintenance to move forward for section for phase one south. So once again, I respectfully uh, ask that you provide us contingent approval of the phase one developer this time. So thank you. And I, uh, I'll turn it back over to Chair Slater. Thank you, Jeff. Just let me start a couple of questions for me. I just want to make sure I'm Kind of clear. So what's before us today doesn't involve any construction at all. Is that correct? That is correct. So it's it's it just allows us to kind of move forward with that 30 day review by our budget committees as well as the members of the Board of Public Works and their team. Correct. And then um, just confirmation to can we so before any construction activities could ever take place. Uh, all the environmental approvals would have to be in place, correct? That is correct. And then uh, we just recently adjusted the NEPA approval to just take place on American Legion Bridge and that 270 South at this time, correct? That's correct. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Any um, questions from members of the board for Jeff? Well, thank you so much, Jeff. It looks like your um, your previous briefings of the board have them uh, all up to speed. So uh, thank you for all your efforts. Uh, now before we uh, move forward, let me, uh, we have two members of the public uh, have signed up to, to speak on this item. I just want to remind uh, members of the public that please feel free to turn your video on uh, if you'd like to be, be seen while you're giving your, your testimony. Uh, this morning on this agenda item, we have uh, Mr. Ben Ross uh, and Mr. Edgar Gonzalez uh, signed up. So at this time, we're going to hear uh, comments. As a reminder, uh, when you're called, we have two minutes to comment. Please feel free to, to turn your video on uh, and, and then uh, we'll hear your comment. My first member of the public up is be Mr. Uh, Benjamin Ross, uh, chair of the Maryland Transit Opportunities Coalition to give his comments on the agenda. Mr. Ross, are you on? 
Yes, uh, thank you very much, Secretary Slater. Um, Good to see you. <clears throat> Uh, just last Friday, we obtained under FOIA a copy of the development framework agreement between Transurban and Virginia, which covers the connection between the uh, existing toll lanes and the Maryland project. The bi-state accord between the two states makes this development framework agreement effectively part of the contract you are voting on today. What we got is full of redactions for confidential business information, whole sections and pages. Every one of these blacked out clauses is being kept secret for a reason. It may be secret to give Transurban an advantage over its competitors, which would add to the already extensive evidence that this procurement was not open and fair. Or it may be secret to give Transurban an advantage over the public, which would, not, which would be even worse uh, I cover one clause in a, the written submission I sent uh, and showing how it gives Transurban an unfair advantage in this procurement. We don't even know what most of the other clauses are about, let alone how each of them advances Transurban's interests at the expense of competitors, drivers, or taxpayers. Transparency is the essence of responsible government. The MDTA board cannot vote on the selection of the P3 developer until the unredacted development framework agreement is made public and its meaning is fully understood. Uh, Justice Brandeis said it many years ago, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ross, for, for your comments, but also for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, I certainly don't want to speak on uh, the Virginia contract, but we will make sure that we keep our Maryland interests uh, at heart, uh, but thank you for again for your comments. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to call on Mr. Edgar Gonzalez, who is the executive director of the Suburban Maryland Transportation Alliance, who would like to to give some comments. Mr. Gonzalez, are you on? Yes, I am. Good to see you as well. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Secretary Slater, members of the board, executive director, and MDTA staff. My name is Edgar Gonzalez, Executive Director of the Suburban Maryland Transportation Alliance and co-founder of the organization. As background, I serve as the Chief Transportation Engineer and as Deputy Director of the Department of Transportation of Montgomery County for over 25 years. I have practiced transportation planning and engineering for more than 40 years in the private and public sectors. As Chief of Engineering for the County, my organization was involved in the selection of design consultants and construction projects. Several of our selections, especially for larger projects, were challenged. Our initial decisions were never overturned for a simple reason. The selection process for our contracts were very clearly written, and the selection committee strictly adhered to the public selection process. That appears to be the process involving the selection of the developer for the P3 project involving improvements to phase one of the I-495 and I-270 improvements. Montgomery County was represented in that process by the director of the Department of Transportation. SMTA's interest in the implementation of improvements to one of the most congested segments on the interstate system and in the United States, and certainly the most congested in the state of Maryland. Our residents and businesses suffer every day intolerable levels of congestion that will get much worse in the future if the project is not implemented promptly. It is especially attractive to the organization that the selected developer team is led by the same firm that implemented similar projects in the Capital Beltway in Northern Virginia. This fact will provide for continuity of service and total collection of the capital beltway from I-95 to I-270 and on I-270 to the I-370 Samai Highway Interchange. The developer's commitment to dedicate funding of improvements to existing transit centers in the county and to provide the state and county with $300 million for transit operations is of special significance. This financial commitment will make the project beneficial to commuters and all users of the facility in a truly multimodal approach. The residents and businesses of the county and the metropolitan area served by the facility 
are looking forward to the implementation of the project. The selected developer has the experience necessary to implement the project and their commitment to funding transit operations makes the selection particularly attractive. The opponents of the project are the same opponents for 50 years that have opposed every single road project in Montgomery County and the state of Maryland. It's unbelievable that they continue with the same tactics. We urge the board to pass the contingent approval of the developer and transmit your approval to the Board of Public Works as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Gonzalez, and, and thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. Uh, with with uh, no questions, uh, further questions, uh, we now uh, will discuss this item. Do we have a uh, vote for a uh, motion to approve agenda item number four? So move, Member Kerr. Second, Member Von Paris. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I just want to reiterate again that this is not a construction contract. This is just a developer, and there will be continued and constant opportunities for collaboration and, and working with uh, members of the public. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now uh, move on to agenda item number five. Uh, we do have some members of the public uh, going to comment on this one as well. Uh, and so this will be contingent approval of the P3 agreement itself. Uh, it's going to be presented uh, by the MDTA by Ms. Deb Sharpless. Deb, please feel free to proceed with your uh, presentation. Good morning, members and chairman. For the record, my name is Deb Sharpless, MDTA's Chief Financial Officer. Um, the purpose of this item is to request contingent approval of the phase public-private partnership agreement for I-495 and I-270 P3 program for phase one. The approval requested is subject to final approval by the Maryland Board of Public Works. The phase P3 agreement and other attachments to the summary report were originally presented to the board members in February with the exception of the MDTA notes term sheet. Many of the documents presented in February are unchanged and any changes or updates are minor in nature or have been done so uh, to align for the benefit of the state and to align the documents of the selected proposal. Um, the new document in your materials is the MDTA notes term sheet. And although this is a new document, the spirit of the information that's being presented is consistent with prior board presentations. So beginning um, with the phase agreement, the MDOT, MDTA and the selector uh, developers are the parties to the agreement. And as been stated several times by the chairman, as well as Mr. Folden, the core responsibilities of the agreement is for the phase developer to perform pre-development work for the del delivery of phase one in sections. The scope of the work is not to construct the managed lanes. After the completion of the pre-development work, MDOT, MDTA, and the entity selected by the um, phase developer, which we'll call the section developer, will enter into a section agreement for the design, construction, finance, operation, and maintenance of the section. Also, MDTA and the section developer will enter into a tolling service agreement and a supplemental trust agreement. I'll talk about these documents in a few minutes. Um, this agreement is for phase one, which includes improvements from I-495 from the vicinity of the George Washington Memorial Parkway in Virginia, across and including the American Legion Bridge to I-270 and I-270 from I-495 to I-70. To restate, this is a multi-step progressive P3, also known as pre-development approach, and um, it's to perform pre-development work. MDTA's responsibility re with respect to the P3 program 
include setting, collecting, and enforcing tolls, coordinating with MDOT SHA and reviewing and approving the P3 agreements and associated documents, leasing the premises owned by MDOT, which was a prior board item, and establishing a new trust indenture and issuing notes to the section developer. Our responsibilities are documented in an interagency agreement, which was previously approved by the board and is included in your materials as attachment eight. Um, now, MDOT and MDTA do intend to amend the interagency agreement to update it to reflect uh, the progressive P3 approach and to add additional details involving the trust agreement and the flow of funds. MDOT is primarily responsible for paying any claims under the P3 agreement, um, with the exception if MDTA uh, for uh, failed uh, to act um, or an omission or a breach on the, the part of MDTA. Now for the balance of this contingent approval item, I'll discuss key documents relevant to MDTA. So beginning with the phase uh, agreement, your board materials includes three documents. They are numbered attachment one, two, and three. Attachment one is a term sheet and it's a comparison showing any changes from February. Attachment two is a clean version of the term sheet. And attachment three is the complete phase agreement, um, the template format from the RFP. So in general, um, final changes will fall into the following categories. There to substitute the proposer's name um, or entity information, um, changes to create some flexibility regarding the master trust agreement, and um, changes to align the agreement with commitments made uh, in the selected proposals development, and then lastly, minor um, housekeeping changes. The, um, so the phase developer, uh, another aspect of the phase developer's work is to ensure financial close is achieved under each section agreement. Uh, so partnering, with MDOT stakeholders, government entities, the phase developer uh, approach will mitigate project risk, prepare conceptual designs for each section, engage with the community, determine how each section will be financed, and determining a fixed design bid price and the operations and maintenance costs for the section. MDTA will be involved in asking in aspects of the pre-development work related to tolling, including our review of the um, toll system integrator and operator, reviewing and negotiating, finalizing, approving, and executing the Section P3 agreement, a toll service agreement, and the supplemental trust. Um, each of these I'll talk about in just a second. Um, now the term sheets for the uh, toll service agreement, section P3 agreement, and the trust are, will be attached to the P3 agreement, as well as the technical requirements. Um, we included in your materials exhibit six, um, specific to tolling. Uh, so the, the phase developer will be responsible for funding all of its costs to perform the scope of the work. At financial close of each section, the phase developer will receive reimbursement subject to a cap for their eligible pre-development costs. Um, and the section developer would be responsible for acquiring sufficient financing to pay for the pre-development work to design and construct a section, finance the related costs, including interest and purchase MDTA notes. If the phase one agreement was canceled, MDOT is responsible for paying or paying the lower of $50 million or documented eligible costs. However, MDOT would receive and own the work products developed for the phase. 
and MDOT would have incurred these costs to develop the work products. And considering the value of the work associated with the American Legion Bridge and Corridor, the work products would hold value aligning with the cost. Now, moving um, closer into some of the specific documents or attachments that's been included, the, the Section P3 Agreement Term Sheet, the Toll Service Term Sheet, and Exhibit 6 are attachments 4, 5, and 7 in your materials. All three of these documents are unchanged from the February board meeting. Um, the Section P3 Agreement Term Sheet um, addresses the responsibility to design, construct, finance, operate, and maintain its section for 50 years. The toll service agreement is specific about the relationship between MDTA and the section developers and how the tolling activity works and, um, you know, dynamic tolls and, and valid transactions and, and the, um, just, just the relationship between us and the, and the partnership that we will have in collecting tolls. And then exhibit six includes technical provisions and key performance indicators um, and non-compliance events. And the, the key performance indicators and non-compliance events, they are specific to um, tolling um, as opposed to specifics about maybe the roadway or, or landscaping or, or some other aspect. So since these documents are unchanged from February, I recommend that I move on to the MDTA term sheet, assuming the board's concurrence with this approach. Uh, no concerns with me, Deb. Okay. So for, for this, Pete, um, since it's a new document, I'm gonna actually move to the attachment which is attachment six. And at the top of each of your items, you can see a blue bar that highlights the um, attachment number for you. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling myself. Dad, give us a minute to get the attachment number six. Please let me know when you're ready. Okay, I have it. Anyone else uh, need another minute? Please proceed. Thanks, Deb. Okay. So first, as as we've talked about in other presentations, the MDTA anticipates it, um, issuing notes or bonds that will be purchased by the section um, developer. And these bonds will be used um, to pay for certain costs in which the state is better equipped to manage and therefore um, create less risk for the project and overall lower costs. And these bonds will be repaid solely by revenue generated by the managed lanes facilities. None of MDTA's existing facilities um, or MDOT or the state have any obligation to pay these notes. So the parties to the agreement will be MDTA um, and the, the trustee, um, which we've identified as Bank of New York Mellon. This is our current trustee. We went through a competitive a um, little mini process in order to uh, determine the trustee. Um, they will have similar responsibilities to what our trustee has today, and the note, the note holder will be the section developer. The trust agreement will have various accounts in it, similar to our trust agreement, 
and each one of these counts, the term sheet will say what it can be used for and the flow of money. Um, the so you know examples of these accounts is upfront payment account, the P3 program account. <clears throat> it's a separate account that we intend to establish just to help separate MDTA toll facility revenue as well as the P3 revenue. It's not a trust account. However, money in that account is still pledged towards these bonds. This also is no different than the MDTA operations. For example, we have accounts with Bank of America um, is one of our depository accounts. They're not with our trustee, but the revenue in those accounts are still pledged um, to our bondholders. Th that would be the equivalent to the P3 program account. So moving on is an operating reserve account. And um, this is the this is a trust account, and this is the account where all toll revenue will be moved into and where MDTA will be reimbursed its cost for collecting tolls. It'll be the account where we pay the notes, and it'll be the account where we transfer money to the developer. Next, we talk about rate covenant shortfalls. And the rate covenant in its simplest form is just defined as whether or not there'll be sufficient money when you look forward 12 months in the operating reserve to meet the obligations. And um, if, if there is a shortfall, the first thing in collaboration with MDOT, we would look to see if there's administrator, administrative or operational changes that can be made to eliminate the shortfall. If that is not the case, then um, MDTA staff um, working um, jointly with MDOT, but in consult specific consultation with MDOT secretary and chief financial officer will present to the board for consideration a toll proposal to adjust um, rate setting process. Um, this is this is the proposal, and then at that point in time, your authority um, kicks in, and you'll make a decision whether or not to move forward, not move forward, or or where we go from that point in time. Th that's the extent of the rate covenant. Um, I'm on the bottom of page four of the term sheet, it talks about shortfalls. I just described that in an abbreviated form. Um, let's see. We we talked about the parties. Um, and then there will be a supplemental trust agreement with each section developer. Um, and, and that will be supplemental to this trust. The I, I discussed the purchase of notes. Um, you know, the, the terms, um, the interest rate, you know, will, will be fixed. It will we'll have normal amortization. We have the ability for early payment. Um, item 13, which is at the top of page six, talks about the pledge um, of revenues. And then 14 is limited recourse. That's, again, how MDTA's existing facilities, MDOT, state, um, no one is on the hook for the payment of this money. It's only revenue generated from the managed lanes. Um, and, you know, then we address you know, different accounts again, because now we're to the point of payment. So these accounts sit underneath the operating reserve and where you have a notes um, proceeds accounts that's similar to our bet bond debt service accounts. That would be the equivalent. And then um, that's, that's where that address is. And then starting in 18 is just standard legal representations and warranties and um, covenants. It's, 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 it's pretty standard, I feel. Um, and let me just see if there's anything of key significance. I think that is all the highlights for the notes. 
um, regarding this item? Let me, uh, since this is a newer document, let me stop there for a second and see if there's any questions. Thank you, Deb. Let me first turn, turn to members of the board, see if there are any questions for Deb. Just for my clarification, Deb, this is completely separate from existing MDTA bonds. That's right. And separate then, and distinct trust. Okay, great. Okay. No, please feel free to keep going. I'm good. I'll ask, I'll ask something later. Okay. So the, the last part of, of what I was going to present to you, um, I'm back when your summary memo, and it is MDTA obligations and risks. It is page five of your summary memo. Sorry to have to have you scroll. And so overall, you know, our exposure and risks with this P3 are very minimal. I mean, we, we're doing our core competency. We're, we're collecting tolls, we're processing transactions. Um, we have bonds, you know, very, you know, minor in nature and, you know, from relative to our existing facilities. And so any, you know, like risks or exposure that we have is really tied to that. You know, so we're responsible to collect tolls. So if we fail to collect tolls, you know, we have responsibility there. Um, if we fail to move money, if we fail to pay the notes, if we fail to take the money we collected from the managed lanes and fail to pay the developers, we have exposure there. But these being our core responsibilities and what we do every single day, you know, from um, staff's perspective, our risks are very low because this is what we're good at. And so the bullets that are listed here um, all tie, you know, and there's only a handful of them, they all tie back to the trust agreement or collecting tolls. Um, and that's the only piece of, you know, exposure or, or risk that we have so again, very, very minimal um, risk to the MDTA. And unless there's any specific questions about the attachments, um, that concludes my presentation and I'd be happy to address any questions. Just one, Deb, I was looking for it in there and I've heard this somewhat of a, uh, I don't want to call it a criticism, but kind of a, a question before there in this P3 agreement, there are absolutely no non-compete clauses for our ability to add transit service up and down this corridor, correct? That's right. Um, and I could find it. Um, it is in, I am, it is in one of the um, term sheets. Um, if you give me a second, I can locate that for I you. Think, I think what I, I think I found it. It uh, it's just basically um, the only competing facility as part of the term sheet. Are uh, if we wanted to further widen the roadway with with more general purpose lanes. Is that correct? In in its broadest sense, yes. Yes, and so yes. it doesn't have anything to do with. Uh, Kind of transit facilities and those types of things so that's good i do, do think when you're looking at an adaptable solution like an hot solution uh, we certainly don't need uh, to have that need to further widen and, and so that criticism i just want to make sure it's out there any questions for deb from uh, members of the board just one short sure. question from member rosen um in regard to the MDTA uh, added, I don't know if that refers to a, a situation such as the pandemic. Um, in the case of a situation like a pandemic where we obviously have, have to shut down and are subject to rules beyond our control, are, is there any risk to MDTA? So there, um, if, if we would reaccount the, the, the pandemic and, um, you know, decisions that we made about um, 
not mailing NOTDs and holding citations and all, we would have to work very closely with the developer and have their input um, on what type of action they would want or not want. So we would not have as much freedom to make choices like we did with our existing facilities and um, if that occurred. Now, you know, so, so that's the decision about, you know, do you mail notices or do you not mail notices? But other um, significant events that could happen. Um, one of the requirements is addressed in the toll service agreements is their ability to buffer transactions. And they have to, if, if we have downtime maintenance or if some type of um, event or disaster occurred, um, we, they need to be able to buffer their transactions um, before they send them to us. You know, and then we need to be able to estimate and transfer funds to them. Um, so, so we have some provisions in the contract trying to anticipate, you know, what could happen um, in the future. So, Deb, just for clarification, when you say transfer funds, or we transfer the toll revenue funds that the collector owned facility, because the That's revenue, right. the the risk on the toll revenue in this agreement is on the private sector, correct? That's right. Um, they are taking revenue risk. So if the traffic is not what they forecast on the roadway, that risk is on them. There's no guarantee uh, about a certain amount of revenue or tolls for them. Thank you, Deb. Member Rosen, did that, do you have any further question? No, thank you. Any other questions from members of the board? Thank you so much. Uh, Deb, did you have anything further before I turn to members of the public? No, I was just going to comment that the non-competing language is mm -hmm. number um, 37. That's, on, what I, that's what I found too. Yeah, and it's on your attachment. Just scroll up, make sure I give you the attachment, right attachment number. It's attachment five. It's part of the section P3 agreement term sheet. Right. And so in there includes the definition of competing facilities. Great. Yes, and so it says additional traffic lanes. Okay, great, thank you, Deb. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm gonna turn to uh, members of the public that are interested in this item uh, for agenda item number five. Uh, it's contingent approval. Uh, this time I'm gonna hear we have uh, two members, or sorry, three three members signed up. We have, uh, let me start with Mr. Arthur Katz, uh, representing uh, Citizens Against the Beltway expansion for his comments on this agenda item. Mr. Katz, are you with us? Thank you, can you hear me? We can, thank you, sir. Okay. On behalf of the Citizens Against Beltway expansion, I urge the board to delay a vote on the agreement for the I-495, I-270, P3 project. It is irresponsible for the board to rush to approve a $50 million contract before the environmental review of the project is complete. The draft environmental impact statement had many deficiencies, which must be addressed in the final environmental impact statement. For example, the draft failed to assess whether the project's adverse impacts would be disproportionately borne by communities of color and low-income communities. The draft failed to address the impact of the project on global warming. The draft EIS failed to analyze the impact of remote work on on traffic patterns. The final EIS will tell us the fiscal, environmental, and social risks of the adding private toll lanes. The public has a right to know the facts and the pros and cons before any contracts are signed. In a Board of Public Works meeting in 2020, Treasurer Nancy emphasized the need to wait for the final EIS before any contracts are signed. She expressed concern that if the money were sunk into the project before the environmental review was complete, it would be too late to reverse course. Rather than wait for the facts, MDTA appears ready to approve the contract to build, a mo to build momentum for a controversial project. Moreover, the MDTA, MD, 
MTDA is rushing to a decision despite a protest from one of the losing bidders, charging the process was unfair, that Transurban was not qualified, and that Transurban had lowballed the project, putting the state at fiscal risk. Voting to rush this contract forward does not serve the interests of Maryland's taxpayers. We urge you to reject the contract and wait for the environmental review to be completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Katz. Thank you for your comments and thank you for being here with us today. I also want to note that Mr. Katz also submitted some written uh, testimony for the record from himself as a citizen. Is that correct, Mr. Katz? Right. Great, right. thank you. And, and all members of the board have that as well. So thank you again for being here with us. Uh, let me next turn to Mr. Uh, Josh Tolkien, director of the Maryland Sierra Club. Josh, are you with us? I am, can you hear me okay? We can, thank you. Thank you so much and good morning, Secretary Slater, um, members. Uh, my name is Josh Tolkien. I'm the director of the Maryland Sierra Club. Um, on behalf of our 70,000 members and supporters, we do request um, that the uh, vote today be delayed until the completion of the final environmental impact statement, or at least uh, the release of the supplemental draft environmental impact statement with comments made by the public and responded to by the agencies. Um, several weeks ago, MDOT announced it would be significantly changing the project design, removing parts of the beltway from this project. Um, it's still enough that it will require a draft environmental impact, impact statement from or as part of the NEPA process. This is one of a series of significant changes that have occurred in this project. Um, you heard earlier several people pushing that we need to accelerate this vote so we don't spend any more and lose any more taxpayer dollars. But the pattern for this project has actually been moving so fast that mistakes were made and money and precious time were wasted along the way. Mistakes could have been avoided had more time. This project requires a new traffic assessment, air pollution reviews, review of financials, water and stormwater impacts, um, and more. And the process requires the chance for the public to respond to these comments. Um, had this project been on a private start, perhaps the phase would be, that's not been the pattern. From the very start, um, under then Secretary Ron, uh, there was a proposed engineering contract, a no bid contract made to a company that he had an historic relationship with that was scrapped and restarted. Um, we've seen numerous false starts on this project. This project at this point does not deserve the a leap of faith where we're putting the cart before the horse and sending this to the BPW before the draft environmental impact study is done. As we've noted, there could be at least $50 million. That is on top of the, I think, $110 million um, engineering contract that has been supporting this work for several years. Now, with a large portion of that money going to studying parts of the Beltway expansion that are no longer even on the table. Reasons for the delay. For First, the lack of transparency. Um, as we've noted, there is the so-called beltway or uh, bi-state accord that has not been released to the public, but is clearly influencing the process. Um, secondly, uh, there's been the suggestion that this contract itself does not include construction. But obviously, we're sinking tens of dollars into this process, making it harder and harder and harder to change course later on down the road. So whether we, this involves construction or not, it is certainly heading in that direction. Um, given the history with this particular project, it would be premature and irresponsible to approve this multi-billion dollar 50 year project before the long-term risks are responded to. Sierra Club and 50 partners issued 200 pages of expert comments on the draft environmental impact state study. We commissioned a traffic engineer and environmental engineers, and those comments have not been responded to yet. So if you understand from the public standpoint, major con concerns have been raised about this project. And in the process, they have not been responded to yet. And in fact, we now have a new change to the project. P3s require public confidence, confidence of the legislature and confidence of the other agencies. Um, I realize I'm at time, so we do believe um, that you will not gain that public confidence if they continue to move forward before these major milestones of public response are met. Thank you very much for your time. 
thank you so much, Mr. Tolkien, and thank you for your time and thank you for your comments and thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Um, and uh, my next uh, speaker will be uh, Mr. Mike Cicada, uh, President and CEO of the Maryland Transportation Builders and Materials Association. Mr. Cicada, are you with us? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you. Please right. proceed. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Secretary Slater and all of MTTA board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment on this important project. Um, uh, Secretary Slater, my name is Michael Sakata. I'm the president and CEO of the Maryland Transportation Builders and Materials Association. Mouthful. Um, our organization promotes and protects the needs of the transportation construction materials industry and ha has done so since 1932. We represent over 21,000 workers and business owners across the state. Um, and I'm here to, to speak on agenda item number five. We appreciate uh, earlier MDOT um, and the board for selecting Accelerate Maryland Partners, a developer phase one. You know, we look forward to working with, with them. Um, as far as five, agenda item five, approval of phase one, replacement and expansion of American Legion Bridge. You know, the American Legion Bridge provides the only direct connection between the region's two most populous counties. Fairfax County in Virginia and Montgomery County, Maryland, which are home to nearly 40% of the region's population and jobs. This bridge is now over 50 years old, and we all can agree it needs to be replaced. We cannot simply just rehabilitate the bridge. It needs to be rebuilt and replaced as a safer and more secure structure to ensure the almost quarter of a million daily commuters arrive safely to their destination. This region desperately needs congestion relief. While the world stopped in 2020, forcing most people to work from home, we cannot use this model when thinking about the next 20 to 30 years in the capital region. Per National Capital Region's Trans Transportation Planning Board, future laid out an additional 1.3 million people coming to our region. And moving forward, this project will do so many wonderful things. It will create high paying, high quality jobs, provide economic relief, cut down on emissions and pollution, and decrease travel times. We need to think smarter and harder to plan for a better future for this region. Additionally, big protests are common and delays are extremely expensive. It is estimated that based on inflation construction cost index, around $6 million based on compelling substantial state interest in light of a potential protest, especially given the unknown timeline. I appreciate you giving me the time to speak and I respectfully ask you to vote favorably on agenda item five. Thank you so much, Mr. Scotta, and thank you for, for being here with us today and thank you for your comments. Um, we'll now uh, uh, proceed uh, with item number vote on the on the agenda, the P3 agreement itself. Do I have a motion to approve the P3 agreement itself? So move, Member Gaines. Thank you, Mario, guys. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all very much. And I just want to take a minute and thank all of the people that had signed up and spoke on those various items. Uh, just a reminder that these are all contingent approvals uh, that all still require approval by the Board of Public Works. So uh, we're going to work through and, and get some comment and some further collaboration before that takes place. Uh, moving to agenda item uh, number six, I do want to um, take a little bit of uh, Chairman's uh, prerogative and, and maybe get us out for like a four or five minute break for a second. Uh, before we move on to agenda item number six, uh, the legislative report, and that should be real quick after a break. So, uh, Natalie, if we get us up for like a five minute break. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you all. Be back at 946.
Thank you all. Natalie, let me know when we have everybody back on. Yes, sir. It looks like we're we're waiting on two members to take their seats. Great. Thank you all for indulging me in that quick break so I can grab a little bit of water. We're currently waiting on one member, sir. Thank you, Natalie. Give me another minute. Great, thank you all. It looks like everybody is back, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started with uh, agenda item number six, which is the P3 legislative report. So this comes through as a for a 30 day review and as well as all the documents to, to members of the General Assembly as well as um, uh, members of the Board of Public Works. So uh, let me turn it back over to Jeff Folden, who is going to present the uh, legislative report for us. Jeff, are you back with us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I am back. Uh, thank you again for taking the time out to uh, let us present this last item related to the P3 program. Once again, for the record, name is Jeff Folden, Deputy Director for the 495 and 270 P3 program for the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. So this report we're asking you to consider for approval will be used as to transmit the phase P3 agreement to the Comptroller, Treasurer, Budget Committees, Department of Legislative Services for the legislative, the statutory required period of review analysis and comments, which will not exceed a total of 30 days. The agreement report will also be posted publicly on our P3 program website. And only after completion of this review analysis and comment period would MDOT and MBTA seek to present the P3 agreement, the phase P3 agreement for pre-development work to the Board of Public Works for approval. Uh, walking through the report at a high level, I just wanted to take a few minutes to do that for you to give you an idea of what's in it. Most of the information you've probably heard in the past or today, but I just wanted to walk through at the high level. Uh, starting on page two, which is just the uh, outlines of the regulations for MDTA and MDOT for P3 for the final agreement report and the contents that need to be uh, covered to the extent possible. Uh, then moving on to page three, we have a table of contents uh, that goes into this report. It's about a 24 page report total. Uh, and then moving forward is first is background and overview where we talk about the background of the program, uh, the fact that this program, these managed lanes are in the the aspirational initiatives of the long range plan to visualize 2045 for the national capital region. And it's one of those initiatives that are needed to address the congestion for existing and future growth demands in the region. One of seven aspirational initiatives, not the only one. Uh, we also discussed the COVID-19 pandemic a little bit in here, uh, noting that most recently traffic on the, on the highway network is back to 90% of pre-COVID levels. And many of our studies that we've seen are showing that uh, you know traffic's gonna return to pre-COVID levels soon. And we've even seen that uh, in May 21, TRIP, which is a national transportation research nonprofit, published uh, a report and it noted in data that had shown that evening rush hours across the country have largely returned to pre-pandemic levels and traffic volumes during midday are even higher than before the pandemic. But while it notes you know, travel in downtown areas has declined the most during COVID uh, and will be the slowest to recover, the travel in the suburban areas such as those served by 495 and 270 have, has largely recovered. And WTOP even noted in its May 26, 2020 article that uh, the rush hour at the American Legion Bridge in the afternoon on May 21st was the highest since pre-COVID and it surpassed the 2019 daily average. So the long-term projections are still valid for the traffic volumes, especially considering the region still projected to add 1.3 million more people and a million more jobs by 2045. Uh, we then outline what the P3 program is, phase one south, phase one north, 
And that's included in here. We discussed a lot of that this morning, including the uh, proposal for hot lanes within the phase one south limits. Additionally, the bicycle and pedestrian enhancements that are being proposed and the transit connections. Uh, the fact that this will be delivered as a progressive P3, which we talked about this morning. So that's gets you through to page the top of page seven. Uh, we then get into the rationale for a P3 and the solicitation process. So, you know, ultimately the rationale we've discussed in the past, um, you know, at this point, MDOT does not have the ability to do, deliver with a public delivery model since we did not have the funding in the capital program to reconstruct the bridge. It would take a full year of MDOT SHA's funding to construct the bridge and three years to deliver phase one south. And we simply would have to delay many projects across the state and cancel those important transit transit transportation highway projects to deliver this. And we need a, you know, we need a funding plan to deliver this on its own. And we also look at the bonding capacity of MDTA through its bonds. It doesn't have the capacity of the debt cap to do this, nor does MDOT through consolidated transportation bonds. Then we outline the solicitation process, which I discussed in the previous agenda item. I'm not going to go through that again, but it just went through the our request for qualifications, request for proposals process, the ratings process, the evaluation process, the conclusions reached by the evaluation committee and presented to uh, and approved by a selection committee, the uh, secretary, the executive director, and administrator of State Highway. Uh, then we highlighted an accelerating round partners proposal, things we discussed earlier, such as their $145 million development rights fee, um, their pre-development cost cap of $54.3 million, and we talked a lot about this morning where their $50 million is the maximum that the state would be uh, would be liable for in the event that the section P3 agreement did not move forward, but that would be an exchange for all the work product that was given so it was completed so MDOT could use that as it sees fit to advance the project and program. Um, additionally, there was the things related to the vision, 5 million Vision Zero grant, 300 million transit operating uh, funding during the operating period and the 50 and 25 million grants for community emerging technologies. Uh, then we get into more detail on who the Accelerate Maryland Partners team is, uh, Transurban, USA Operations Inc., and Macquarie Infrastructure being the lead project developers and delivering the phase development work and then ultimately forming the section developer who would be responsible for the final design, construction, financing, operations, and maintenance. They're supported by their lead designers, Dewberry Engineers, and Stantec Consulting Services as lead designers, and also Bechtel Infrastructure Corporation, as a supporting construction manager. And for those who aren't familiar with Bechtel, they are one of the largest contractors in the world. And they have significant experience in all types of projects, including transportation industry. They have many exclusive sub-consultants. I'll highlight a couple. Uh, ECS Mid-Atlantic, Flora Teeter, who's a local landscape architect. Soltez, who's an engineer along the 270 corridor, along with STV and Whitney Bailey, Cox Magnani, WBCM all firms that are very uh, tied in and utilized in Maryland. Also, strategic partners related to technology and infrastructure uh, for autonomous and connected vehicles and related to transit. And they have a significant diversity inclusion and local workforce team led by Modern Times, 3E Consulting, and Lizar. And just to highlight, like Lizar was the program manager for the MGM National Harbor Casino Project, which actually realized a 40% minority and women business enterprise participation, exceeding the project goals by 9%. Uh, so moving forward, this talks about the phase P3 agreement, the pre-development work, which we've uh, talked about previously, including the uh, some of the termination events and compensation events that were highlighted earlier, that would, uh, the, the very limited circumstances where MDOT, not MBTA, but MDOT would be liable to pay the $50 million, up to $50 million termination in the event at no fault of the developer, the Section P3 agreement did not move forward. Um, also discuss the security. There's a $5 million security for the proposal currently submitted by the phase developer. Uh, upon effective date, they would also provide a $10, minute, $10 million security to MDOT. And it's, that's also on top of the $145 million letter of credit for the development rights fee that they will provide. Uh, they're responsible to reach financial close by fall of 2022 and the current deadline, October 31st. As part of the pre-development work, they'd be developing a financial plan. There'll be no state contributions to the financial plan. Uh, they'll be responsible to seek federal loans and credit assistance through the United States Department of Transportation, 
uh, Transportation and Infrastructure and Innovation Act, or TIFIA. So be looking for a TIFIA loan to support a significant portion of the design and construction work, the capital expenditures, and that would all be recourse to the developer, not the state. They'd also be responsible for getting the additional private investment through uh, taxable bank debt, taxable private placements, and uh, private activity bonds. Once again, that's all. that would all be non-recourse to the state. There'd be no local or other funding contributions. And, um, you know, it's expected this financing plan for the P3 agreement will be developed and included in the Section P3 agreement next year. There's also, as Deb highlighted earlier, uh, a very small amount of MDTA notes being issued that would be paid for only from toll revenues to generated from uh, this phase one south section. Uh, so there's no impact on state debt. Once again, in the very, very limited circumstances where we would terminate the phase P3, the phase one P3 agreement at no fault of the developer there'd be $50 million, up to $50 million paid to them for the exchange of their work product, and that would be paid for out of appropriations from the Transportation Trust Fund, not from MDTA. Um, so there's also provisions for future revenue sharing that in the event of the Section P3 agreement's initial financial projections exceed what's expected, that there would be revenue share with the state. Uh, moving forward, the agreement talks about the tolling, which we were well briefed on by uh, Deb Sharpless last month, and the uh, toll rate setting process. Also moving on down toward page 21, we get into the, the environmental review update, which we've talked about earlier this morning and the uh, new recommended preferred alternative recently announced and the supplemental draft environmental impact statement to be released by the end of the summer for public review. Uh, ultimately at the end, we uh, get into previous MDOT commitments to the Board of Public Works that uh, there'll be no property acquisition before a P3 agreement approved by the Board of Public Works and we are maintaining that commitment with the exception of we're still coordinating with certain property owners to initiate option payments. So we want to leave that open if there's uh, option payments where there's a willing seller of land that we can enter into those to provide mitigation for some of our agency partners, such as the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Uh, there's the mass transit bus commitment that mass transit buses will be able to use the uh, hot lanes for free. And that is in the phase P3 agreement, the section P3 agreement as well, term sheet. There's the regional transit commitment where we're working with uh, in Montgomery County and Frederick County on executing MOUs for regional transit service improvements that would be delivered as part of the operating term of the Section P3 agreement. And uh, also the monorail feasibility study, which the Secretary's Office completed and published back in February of 21, which is available on the Secretary's Office internet page. And the phasing commitment that we are moving forward with phase one, which includes American Legion Bridge up to I-70 in Frederick. No other phases are moving forward at this time, and we're nothing will move forward without future approvals of the Board of Public Works. So that's an over high-level overview of the, the agreement report. And at this time, I, uh, you know, we're seeking approval of this agreement report to move forward with submission to the legislature, comptroller treasurer, DLS, and public review. And we are respectfully asking your approval. So at this, this time, is, I'll take any is, questions. This is Mary. I'll make this, this is Mary. This question start. I'll make the motion. Great. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second, second. it. Member Cox. Member I'll second. Great. Before I take a vote, just one question, Jeff, from me. Um, the 30 day legislative review process, you know, gives us the ability to do that. So when we go to construction, we'll have another 30 day legislative review process as well for that contract. That's correct. Any future contracts section agreement would have a separate 30 day review process. Great. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great motion carries. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, before I uh, that does conclude our agenda at this point, we're complete. Uh, before I uh, make a motion to to adjourn the meeting, I do want to take a minute and thank everyone who presented on this agenda. Or, I want to thank everyone who came in and commented, uh, whether you are uh, for the project or whether you have concerns with the project, your perspective is extremely important to us. Uh, you know, I think the recent scaling back on focusing on the American Legion in 270 is a direct result of, of that collaboration. So I uh, thank you for taking your time and thank you for being engaged on this uh, project and this program. So uh, at this point, is there a motion on the table to adjourn the meeting? So move. Move. Number Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Any against? Motion carries. Thank you all very much. This now concludes the meeting of the MDTA board at 10.01 a.m. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.